As the weeks go by, spring turns to summer. The sea ice melts and the ocean gets closer. It means feeding the chicks is easy, so they are growing up fast. They hang out together in small, comforting huddles. But Snow Chick isn't ready to cut the ties, despite being too big for his father's pouch. It's starting to get embarrassing. It's long overdue, but his father finally persuades him to find his place in the gang. But there's an art to joining a huddle and he hasn't mastered it. But practice makes perfect, and the first thing to work out is which way to face. You know you've got it right when someone snuggles in behind you. Accepted at last. This is a huge milestone in his development. It means that for the first time, both parents can go fishing. The chick is not so sure he's ready to be left on his own. But the colony has invisible walls and he instinctively knows they mustn't be crossed. The adults left behind don't have the caring ways of his parents. Until they return, he must find one of the colony's childminders. A penguin who hasn't bred takes on the role as practice for the future. She'll take him under her wing, but only if he does as he's told. She's a firm believer in discipline. With so many chicks in her care, stragglers won't be tolerated. He will just have to toughen up. But there's a reason for the new strict regime. With the warmer days, the open sea is closer now and new and unwelcome visitors can reach the colony easily. A giant petrel. They always pick on the smallest. He's caught, but just by his baby fluff. The childminder is welcome now. It's now a deadly game of hide-and-seek.
Luckily, the petrel spots an easier meal of scraps. And the chick has learned a valuable lesson. A Sally Lightfoot crab. One of thousands of shore crabs just waiting for their moment. Every day, they gather on the tropical shores of Brazil, waiting for the tide to go out. Which exposes their feeding grounds. Seaweed-covered rocks a hundred meters from the shore. Getting there is a race against the tide. They leap from rock to rock. These crabs seem to be afraid of the water. The moray eel. The chain moray is a specialist crab hunter. Its blunt teeth can easily grip and crush a crab's shell. It's the crab's deadliest enemy. But the crab's feeding grounds are still a long way off. They must press on. Halfway. But their enemy has other ideas. Crossing the land. To reset the ambush. To feed, the crabs must keep going. But nowhere is safe. An octopus, also a crab killer. Make a dash for it.
risking life and limb to graze on these seaweed pastures. But in two hours' time, when the tide starts to turn, they will have to run the gauntlet all over again. During the dry season, over half a million terns crowd onto this remote atoll in the Indian Ocean. Their chicks are still in their dark juvenile plumage. They vary in age. Whilst the more advanced chicks take to the air, Others aren't quite ready yet. Those just starting to learn to fly use the shallow lagoon that occupies the center of the atoll as their training ground. It's difficult for some of them to stay aloft for long. here from neighboring reefs, attracted by this abundance of potential prey. The fledglings stay out of the water if they can. They even drink on the wing. If the Trivalli are to catch one now, they have to up their game. So there is a fish here that, amazingly, has a brain capable of calculating the airspeed, altitude, and trajectory of a bird. comes when every fledgling has to take to the air and collect food for itself. lead them to the training grounds.
they are to survive, they must learn quickly. After a month of practicing over the lagoon, the youngsters start to leave and take their chances out over the open sea. The heat is overwhelming. Hippos can't sweat, but they do secrete a thick, oily, reddish fluid. This acts as a sunscreen and helps protect against infection. But he still needs to drink. Water holes are dangerous traps for thirsty animals. This one is staked out by lions. They're practiced giant killers. Together, they can take down an elephant. can hold his ground if he needs to. And he forces the lions to allow him a share. Finally, he gets his much needed drink. on its way. In the distance, a flood is creeping slowly closer. dry paths. So, once again, the hippos have determined the course of the river's channels. changes once again, and all that the hippos had lost will soon return. Their resilience, determination and adaptability have carried them through the toughest of times. along the veins of the Delta, and life soon reappears. As 
As the land recovers and the flood waters peak, the channels created by the hippos carry the water to its furthest limits. It's they who will perpetuate the watery wonderland of the Okavango. Everything and everyone that lives here owe their presence to the hippos. Africa's river giants. She enters into the maze of gullies. The damp channel margins are carpeted with grass that lures in grazing antelope. Still, they remain on high alert. Stealth is the best weapon. Clamping her jaws over both nose and mouth, she can stay clear of those stiletto horns and cut off its airflow. But a spotted hyena is drawn to the commotion. close to twice the weight of a leopard. <laughs> Armed with bone-crushing jaws, this opportunist won't pass up the chance to cash in on the hard work of others. <laughs> As they mature, young males begin to explore the boundaries of the pride's territory. Red has ventured out alone. of the hyena clam. <laughs> He's trapped by 
by over 20 of them. The pack tries to bring him down. This number of time is to kill him. saved his cousin's life. Exhausted from his swim, the bear must regain his strength. The next day, a sea fog shrouds the island. The Wallaces sense that they're in danger. Using the fog as cover, the bear approaches the herd. The adults close ranks around their young, presenting a wall of blubber and hide. He tests the barrel, but it stands firm. It appears that the world's largest land carnivore has met his match. There must be a chink in the armor somewhere. Not here. This female walrus is shielding her pup if he can just prize her off. The bear's claws and teeth can't penetrate her thick hide. With the herd retreating to water, the bear must move quickly. Having failed with one, he heads straight for another. The chance of his first meal in months is slipping away. He 
seems increasingly desperate. It's now or never. He must avoid the stabbing tusks if he's to win. The flailing walrus is immensely powerful and drags the bear away from the shallows towards the safety of the herd. It slips from his grasp. <laughs> 